welcome to the Joy of the Lord Show. Today's show is brought to you by the Restoration in Christ Church, anonymous donors, and supporters and viewers like you. And now your host, Father Richard Hill. of the Restoration in Christ Church, The Joy of the Lord Show. We're very privileged today to have with us Pastor Delbra Stevens, and I'm going to allow her to tell you a little bit more about herself. And uh, she's brought a guest today to explain one of the principles of ministry we'd like to share with you today. Pastor Stevens. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, the ministry is the North Central Texas Prayer Warrior Ministry slash His Hands Extended Outreach. And the ministry started out as a prayer ministry and also we help many, many families. We call the working poor, um, the elderly, and the single moms, and uh, those that really, truly, really need help. And uh, I have a guest here with me, and this is um, Jessica. Jessica came to us about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and wanted, uh, needed help. And it's really awesome how ministry goes because this past July, I got sick with uh, bladder cancer. And little did I know that Jessica just stopped what she was doing and ministered to me, um, coming in and just doing some cleaning and cooking and then also doing a laundry. And she has just really, truly been a blessing. One of the things that I really, truly like about her because she's family oriented and now she's my spiritual daughter. This is Jessica. Hello. Well, I think part of the reason why we have this uh, particular two people on the set with us today is the theme for today is ministry growing where you're planted. Unfortunately in the church today uh, there's a lot of ministry going on that doesn't really seem to be making much difference. The Christian church is spending more money than any other faith uh, has ever spent and we're losing market share. There has to be a reason. There has to be a reason why it's not being effective. One of the things that we'd like to share with you is the idea that the Lord brings ministry to you. You don't really need to go looking for it unless you've already taken care of what he's brought to you. So what we have here is a well-known minister in our area, Pastor Delbra Stevens, who gives out tons and tons of food, has been involved in uh, the homeless, working with all kinds of ministries. Just about anybody in need ought to know her. If they haven't received direct help from her, they've received indirect help from her probably. And what we have is a situation where she got down and she needed help. So I asked her to come on the program and also Jessica to explain how God never blesses only one person. His word explains to us and shows us that we need to be needed, that we need to be used. And we have here an example. And so these fine people can tell you how that works. Jessica, why don't you give us a general idea who came out ahead with all this service? You, you washed clothes, you, you vacuumed rugs, you came over and you were really a help. You did what needed to be done. And who ended up the most blessed, do you think? I believe I did, me and my children did. And how is that? When, like Mom said, um, Minister Stephen, when we first met her, it was over a year ago, and I came to her as a single mother needing help with groceries and unconditionally she helped me and my family within that time period you know she became my mother my so, children I've never had a mother and now I have a mom I have a dad my children finally have grandparents we come over and the doors unlocked we come right in I say hey mom hey pops and I think I'm the one that came on top because not only is she still blessing me and my family and many families in the community, but through her ministry, I've been able to help other families as well. So in other words, what you helped with was not a lot of money. It was not based in a lot of 
theological understanding. Absolutely. It not. wasn't a deep doctrine that you learned at seminary school. No. This was a need that you saw from someone that you felt love for, and so you just stepped in and did it. Is that correct? Absolutely. And what you got back was something that cannot be bought with money. Absolutely not. I got a family. Got a family. She gave me sisters. She gave me a dad. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't find that in any store. It cannot be bought. Well, Sister uh, Pastor Delbra, why don't you explain to us all how that works? We know that you didn't give her anything. And yet, through her service to you, she was given everything. How the Lord was willing to work through you then to provide her what she needed. Amen. The Lord is just really, truly awesome because for many, many years I've given over and over and over again and had no idea then when I was stricken with uh, bladder cancer that I would have people ministering to me. And it was just truly, truly awesome how he worked that not only with Jessica, but another young lady um, in Straight Street Ministry kept the ministry going while I was going through chemo and not being able to do uh, the work that I needed to do and never did miss a beat. You know, the Lord is very faithful. He's faithful to us and we are faithful to him. And uh, not only with that, we minister on Sundays at Red Oak Nursing Home each Sunday. And the ministering team that, that I have has helped me. They continue going out to Red Oak, ministering to the people there. And uh, it's just, I, I, I can't say enough because God is just truly, he's an awesome, awesome God. And you see, this is something that we run into over and over again. She has a team of ministers that she has helped to bring up, that she's trained, that she has helped to, to be ready to step in the gap and to do what is necessary. And they, I've spoken to many of them, they all feel blessed too. They do not feel that the ministry helps other people as much as it helps them. So those of us who are Christians and have a few years in the, the battle, you know what I'm talking about. Let's, uh, let's help spread the word a little bit that there's plenty of ministry down the block. There's plenty of ministry around the corner, maybe in the church. And yes, it's great to go halfway around the world and to send missionaries. There's those that are called for that. But ministry, the vast majority of it, is growing where you're planted. And then maybe you'll find that your needs get met. That maybe you'll end up with something that cannot be bought. You, you can't you can't buy what this young lady has received, nor her children. And there's no way that the future can be told as to exactly what good has been done. Her children are different and will be different and will grow up differently because of this. And all because she was real willing and able to just come in where there was a need. And I was speaking with her a little bit earlier. And what, what was it you said when I called what you did ministry? What was your answer? I didn't know what that, I didn't think that was ministering. I thought that was just helping my mother out. Right. A woman that you didn't call mother not too long ago. No. <clears throat> but a woman that you feel is your mother now. Yes, that's correct. She Something is. that cannot be paid for with money. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. Puts the solitaries into families. That's what his word says, and he's true to his word. Thank you, Jesus. I know that it's true. Okay, Sister Delbra, could we get you to explain to us a little bit more about what your ministries do? I know that you're, uh, I put in some of the publications advertising this show that you were with His Hands Extended Ministry, but that's not the whole story, is it? No, His Hands Extended uh, Outreach um, not only ministered through groceries, but only also personal hygiene, and then we also went last year, uh, we wasn't able to do it this year, but last year we went to Mexico and was able to bless kids there with shoes. And then also uh, with the homeless, we have personal hygiene packets that we give other ministries that we're able to bless them. And we got an abundance of Pop-Tarts and yogurt 
and uh, crackers yesterday, <laughs> and uh, there was so much overflow. We were able not only to bless some of the uh, ladies at Mountain Creek, but also uh, there was a truckload that went to Christ for the Nations, to uh, the young men and women there that are in ministry that are going to Bible school. So there, we never ever know how God is going to bless and how things are going to, uh, to happen and how we're going to just be a blessing to, to many, many. Uh, we have a happy birthday Jesus party that we have every second, uh, second uh, Saturday in December. And we are able to bless the kids not only with, with clothing and new shoes and so forth. You know, many times kids can get toys, but during the year they get hand-me-downs. But to open up a present with uh, being blessed with new items is really, truly awesome. Praise God. Uh, what she's left out is that she has given food to many other ministries, helped start service ministries in many places and uh, young upcoming ministers in this area many of them know her many of them have gotten their start with sister Delbra and um, as a matter of fact one of my personal friends is still preaching and doing music at one of your services at a nursing home Amen. might have him on the show sometime in the future okay well, I'd like to also, while we're here today, I'd like to introduce you to your new favorite Christian artist. His name is Christian Caulfield. You may have heard of him back when he was doing music in this area with the group, and he got out of it for a while. He was doing Christian music, and um, he decided that he would take a break and get to know Christ a little better so the music could be for the Lord and rather than for the performance. So I'd like for you to, to take a moment and try to figure out for yourself what's different about his music. We'd appreciate your phone calls that might help us to, and letters to help us to know exactly, but I think we already know what part of the difference is. Christian? When God's light shines
Thank you, Christian. Maybe you all can help us figure out what's different between that and the rocking stuff that he used to do. Hmm. Uh, we love to hear from you. Uh, so please send us your questions, comments, and suggestions. And if the Lord leads, you can send some support. If um, for, I'm going to ask Christian for every donation of $10 or more to send you a pre-release copy of that song. Um, and I'm going to tell him to autograph it because I have a feeling you're going to be hearing that name and seeing him in the future. We like to be grateful to all of the people who have helped us. There's been so many people help us get to this point. We can't help but hope that the shows will just get better and better as time goes on. I know there's some people out there hoping so too. <laughs> and we, we're certain that it will. So, uh, we're going to have a segment of gratitude in each show. And right now I'd like to thank a gentleman named Sam Washington who works at the post office in Pleasant Grove. I've been seeing Sam for several years when I come in and talk to him. I didn't, don't know him personally that well, but I know that he's always a pleasant fellow, a very happy type of guy. And we went in to get a post office box for this show. And uh, I wanted it to be something catchy, something that people could remember. So I spoke with him about it, and I gave him a list of different, different alternatives. He went in the back, and he spent a great deal of time and came back out and said, I got a different one. The ones you want, one or two of them are available, but they're not that good. How about this one? All of our post office boxes start with 17. So how about 17, 1, 2, 3, 4? People can remember that. I said, wow, Sam, that sounds great. Considering the alternative was 17, 2014, what would we do when the show's in 2015? You know, well, it would be a sound a little bit out of date by then, I guess. So anyway, as I was walking out the door, Sam, I told you I was going to say thank you for your idea and for your work. One other thing, Sam, as I was walking out the door, you know how we're always talking silly little jingles and things? It came to my mind, for prayer and more, write 17, 1, 2, 3, 4. That one's for you, Sam. Thank you so much. Okay. Sister, I want to ask you if you would lead us in a short prayer at this time. Time is just slipping away. I mean, it just goes away when you're having fun. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Almighty Jesus, Lord, we just come before you, thanking and praising your holy name. Lord, you are worthy to be praised, Lord. And Father, we ask you to bless America, Lord. Father, we ask you in the name of Almighty Jesus, Lord, not only to bless our president, but the cabinet members, Lord, and everyone in leadership, Lord, especially those that are get on the front line. Lord, we pray right now for our servicemen and women, Lord, that put their lives on the, on the line each and every day. Father, to keep America free, Lord. And not only our firefighters and our police officers, Lord, we ask you to bless them also in a mighty way. Lord, we lift our families up to you, Lord. And most of all, Father, we ask you in the name of Almighty Jesus that our families would go back to the old tradition, Lord, that they will honor you first of all and be a blessing not only to themselves but, Father, to their children, Lord. You said bring up a child in the way it should go, and, Lord, it will not perish, but it will always go in the way that you allow it to go, Lord. And we speak that in the name of Almighty Jesus. Lord, bless us, Father, in a special and mighty way, Lord. And, Father, not only the families, Lord, but also we lift those that are ill, Lord, those that are, uh, need prayer, those that need to walk in faith and trust you in the name of Jesus. Father, Proverbs 18 and 21 says, um, life and death is the power of the tongue. Lord, when you made this, when you made us, Lord, and made this earth, you made us in your image. And Father, we pray right now that we will walk in your image and in your of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sister. We'd like to close our program with a segment called The Final Word. The final word, as I mentioned earlier for today, is surely. I sort of stumped a few of the people that we talked to, to that we run some ideas around about each show. Said, how in the world can the word surely 
end up being a Christian subject? Well, I'll just jump right into it because we don't have much time left. Basically, there's so many people in the world today that think that they know God so well that they will tell you, surely God does not want this to happen to you. Surely God does not want that to happen to you. Surely God does not want this to happen. Surely did God did not cause that to happen. I'd like to remind you we worship a God who hardened Pharaoh's hearts so that the firstborn of all of Egypt would be killed. We worship a God who sent his Holy Spirit, taking Jesus Christ into the desert to be tempted. So when you hear, surely God doesn't want you tempted, surely God doesn't want this or that, his ways are above our ways. He is looking at eternity. We are looking at small things. And as Sister Delbra, Pastor Delbra can tell you, some of the worst things that ever happened to us, I know this is true for me, some of the worst things that ever happened to me ended up being the best things that ever happened to me. They're what ran me out of myself. And so if you've got a son or a daughter or you've got people you've been praying and praying and praying, these problems away from them, and you're also praying for them to come to the Lord, you may be praying against God's will because sometimes we as humans require God to take us through problems before we'll truly listen. So it's real popular in the world today to say God doesn't want us to have any problems and the Christian should live a blessed life and should never have any problems, never be sick. I have them come to me all the time and say, Father Richard, I'm tired of you preaching that God can use illness. God never causes illness, God never uses it. And I like to say, oh yeah, well then how come all the people Jesus saved, is, or how come all of them are dead? Did he just not do it well enough? Did he just not do it right? If, if those people were there then, would they straighten Jesus out on how he could heal them and they'd stay alive forever? It's not God's plan for us to be alive forever, and evidently it's not God's plan for us to live a life of no problems. The name of this program is The Joy of the Lord, and you'll never know the true joy of the Lord until you stop trying to manufacture it for yourself and you start receiving it. It is the Lord that makes us happy. It is his presence. It wasn't money that, that gave Jessica her, her joy now. She traded her time. When you trade your time, talent, and treasure for what the Lord tells you to do, you get back things that money cannot buy. Normally, you also get back money, too, the things that money does buy, at least eventually, but not always. So you get what you need. It may not be what you want. My God's name is not Shirley, and whether you know it or not, yours isn't either. Now, I want to speak my heart. There's people out there who say, I've tried that Christian thing. It didn't work for me. We run across them under the bridges, homeless, all the time. Pastor Stevens and I, we've seen it, heard it so many times. I'd just like to say that what you have to give the Lord is your heart. So many people know Jesus as their Savior at one point, but they don't know him as their Lord. You know, with the sinner's prayer, be my Lord and Savior. Well, they got that Savior part all right, especially when their pants are on fire because they, they lit the fire themselves with their bad decisions. Those people, they, you know, they're, they're ready to have a Savior. But the next day and the next year, are, do they want to have a Lord? Do they want somebody to tell them what to do? Do they, do they want to please somebody else? Are they looking to Jesus to lead and guide them? That's the part that I think that we fall far short of in our country today. And that's why I think we're losing market share in the nation, in the world. Our kids aren't coming to church. You've got to entertain them. It's got to be exciting. You have to have all kinds of things just to get a few kids to show up at church now. It's ridiculous. But why? Because maybe we're not showing them the power of God ourselves. Maybe we as parents and leaders, maybe we as pastors, maybe we need to get on our knees and pray. Maybe we need to be the witnesses that these kids look at and say, that man, that woman has something I want has something I need. Hmm. Instead of talking at them, maybe we need to talk to them. And maybe we need to stop telling people who come to us when we need the lawn mowed that God called them to a ministry of landscaping. You know, maybe it's time to, to really look for what 
God is giving people to do, talents and, and desires of their heart, so that when they do the work for the Lord, they'll enjoy it, they'll be fulfilled. You know, it's not work. It's not, for a preacher to preach, it's not work. If it's work, he's in the wrong line. He ought to quit. He ought to sell shoes. Preaching is not work for a preacher. Ministering is not work for a minister. Oh, it can get tiring, and you can have times when you just question how wise you were to accept the call. But in the final analysis, just like Peter said, oh, where else are you going to go? What else are you going to do? Once you've tasted the streams of flowing living water, where else are you going to go? What else are you going to do? So, find your ministry where you are. Look around you. Sure, God pulls many of us out and sends us to different parts of the world and different parts of the nation. But let's provoke the nations to jealousy first by the love we show for one another, your neighbor. And if you're mad at your mother, give her a call anyway. Let her see that when you say you become a Christian, you're trying harder. If your kids won't speak to you, try to send them another message. Try to drop the anger. Try to show the world that being Christian is supposed to mean something more than the exact same stats that the rest of the world has. And remember, the final thought, the final word, is that our, we worship a God whose name is not Shirley. We don't know what surely God's going to do. But we do worship a God of love. Show that love for one another. You know, when Jesus said, by this my disciples shall be known, the love they show for one another, he didn't say if or maybe, and he didn't say some of you. He said they would be. That was a prophecy. Let's help fulfill that prophecy by the love that we show for one another. And that, my friends, is the final word.